Hello there. This is Ryan Owen and Sam Dame with Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever here in Indiana. We'd like to take some time today to discuss some different management options that you can use to help you out with your warm season grass and wildflower plantings. We'll be looking at a field that's been split up into three different sections. Two of those sections have been managed and the one behind us has yet to be managed at all. You can see that we've got a lot of cottonwoods starting to pop up in the back and the grass itself which is a mix of switchgrass, big blue stem and some Indian grass is starting to get very tall, very rank and is so dense that not much wildlife can move through it. If we come in and examine at the ground level you'll notice that the thatch from years past has built up on here making it very hard for chicks of game birds, whether they be northern bobwhites or ringneck pheasants, to move effectively and forage in this condition. So as just kind of a little test, we're gonna have Sam here walk into the stand and we'll see just how dense this grass is getting. Sam? As you can see, this grass is extremely dense, very thick, and almost so dense that Sam can hardly get through it. Next we'll show you the management strategies that have been applied to the other two sections, and you can decide for yourself which one you'd like to use on your property. So the first management technique we're gonna look at is prescribed fire by itself. The plot behind us was burned in March of this year. We've got about four months of growing season behind us now, and you can see that we still have a very dense stand of tall vegetation. So on a density perspective, we didn't really gain a whole lot. What we did gain is removing the thatch at ground level. So as you can see here, we did open up some ground network there's a lot more space available for quail chicks or pheasant chicks to scurry in through here, find escape cover, and find food to forage upon. What I'm going to have Sam do again is walk into the plot and we'll see just how far she can get in there as kind of a perspective on how dense this vegetation really is. Sam? And you can see we put the green shirt on her so she camouflages in and shows this a little bit better. But as she gets in there, you'll notice that at some point we start to really lose her. So the next technique we're going to examine is a combination of prescribed fire and disking. So the plot behind us, which is immediately adjacent to the plot you just saw, which was just burned by itself, was both burned in the fall and then followed up with a disking. The disking consisted of about three passes of a fairly heavy disc. And you can see immediately that we've got a great reduction in density in our taller grasses just from that disking. So not only do we have a reduction in the grass density, but we also get a great flush of annual forbs, whether they're common ragweed or black-eyed Susan, we didn't have that same complement come in with just prescribed burning alone. So having some of these forbs is going to provide more diversity and a greater food benefit for the birds you might have in your stand. And again, we're going to have Sam walk through the stand and see how dense the grass is. So you can see here again, the density is much less than what we had when we lost Sam and the burned only stand. Thanks for watching. For more information on habitat creation and management, contact your local Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever Farm Bill Wildlife Biologist. You can find your biologist by going to pheasantsforever.org, scrolling to the bottom of the page, and clicking on the Find a Biologist link. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash INPFQF.